But we we had sex when that was like for like four or five days after my birthday. So okay. that's your. Would you say the whole? Do the man one day. I said the whole course of the relationship. Ain't no, whole, no relationship. Stop lying. You got a calendar from 24 years ago. Hey, listen, wow. I don't even I keep do a my calendar homework. from last. Let but you got a show. calendar I, from 24 hey, years dig, ago. Hey, I do my homework. I'm mean, creating a calendar to illustrate. But three months later, she tell me she's pregnant. A month later. So get this. Judgment is for the plaintiff, Ms. Racker. Stewart. She claims she and Mr. Anderson were an item for six months, 27 years back, resulting in their kid, Christopher. She accuses Mr. Anderson of playing hide-and-seek with his dad duties. But stick around, it only gets juicier. Miss Stewart, you say a six-month relationship with Mr. Anderson 27 years ago resulted in the birth of your son, Christopher. You say Mr. Anderson is a deadbeat who's been running from his responsibility all this time, and you intend to prove eternity today. You won't believe this bit. Mr. Anderson fires back, calling Miss Stewart a bit too friendly with too many, chasing child support like it's her job, and told totally clueless about who the real daddy might be. He's adamant he's not the father. Oh boy, wait till you hear Ms. Stewart's comeback. You say Ms. Stewart was a promiscuous two-night stand who is obsessed with child support money and has no idea who her child father is. Say there is no way you are her son's father. Things are heating up. Ms. Stewart doubles down, insisting Mr. Anderson has been dodging his dad duties. Mr. Anderson is not having it, claiming he's been in and out of court trying to sort this mess. Buckle up, the drama is ramping up. I'm here to prove that Tony Anderson is a deadbeat father. I object, Your Honor. I have been going back and forth to court to try to establish paternity. That's a lie, Your Honor. Because he is Chris' father. It's time for him to man up. We dated for six months, Your Honor. She's a lie. You say it wasn't six months, Mr. No, Anderson? we only messed around twice. We was more or less uh, friends with benefits. No way. Did he just say that? The argument heats up with Mr. Anderson, recalling a rather flattering comparison of himself to a pork chop by Ms. Stewart during their first meet. Yep, you read that right. And guess what? There's more hilarity ahead. We we, we talked on the phone for about two months. She came to my house, she was looking at me like I was a poke chop. You know what I'm saying? So You wasn't it, it, tasty. Look, look, it very much because you, you only cooked beans look, and rice look, food. Look, I count on one hand how many times I've ever seen in my whole life. That's you a lie. You say you judge. dated for six months. That's this a lie. fool That's in a lie. February of 91. We was in a relationship. The last time I chilled with him was so, in okay. August. Hold on to your seats, folks. Mr. Anderson tries to set the record straight with a Labor Day weekend timeline that he says proves he couldn't be the dad. He's pretty firm on this point. Keep watching because this roller coaster is about to go off the rails. We got Labor Day weekend. Oh, so in yellow, you have Christopher Stewart's birthday is February 19th, where you had the two-night stand was Labor Day weekend. Yes, ma'am. She came in the van, her and her friends, they took us to the beach, and we had sex in the van. That was the second time. Second time. I'm lying. I'm listening. Second time. She was already two months pregnant. Can you handle this? They delve into the nitty-gritty of their brief fling, with Mr. Anderson insisting it was just a birthday bash booty call. Ms. Stewart disagrees. Things are about to get even spicier, so don't go anywhere. I met Mr. Anderson February. The last time me and him slept together throughout the whole six months was his birthday week. His birthday was in August. I mean, you, your birthday not in birthday, August 27. But we we had sex when that was like for like four or five days after my birthday. So okay. that's your. Would you say the whole do the man one day? I said the whole course of the relationship. There ain't no, whole, no relationship. Stop lying. This part's a doozy. Ms. Stewart spills the beans about telling Mr. Anderson about the baby bump. He supposedly said. Nah, you tripping. He was MIA at the birth. Didn't sign the birth cert. Nada. What's next? You'll crack up at his excuse. You find out you're pregnant. Yes, ma'am. Do you tell Mr. Anderson? Yes, Your Honor, I did. And what does he say? I'm tripping. I hold a daddy. Then obviously he wasn't a part of the birth no, process. Ma'am. Wasn't there when Christopher was born. Did you put his name on the birth certificate? No, Your Honor. He was not present. Your Honor, that's not true. When that boy was two days old, I came over there with some dyke. You're not ready for this. Ms. Kriu Chun Sar. Ms. Stewart whips out the big guns. Proof of Mr. Anderson owing over 20 grand in child support. Mr. Anderson admits it, but isn't happy about the figure. Strap in, the next part is a wild ride. The reason why we probably here today, because when I was contacted, I received a letter in the mail from the Texas Attorney General. They've been compensating money from him. It's a debt for over 20 some thousand dollars that he owes. I got the paperwork right here. Let me see you this to run for paperwork. Me? Just what like you, what you mean? You DNA run. test the whole life. It the would make what? sense. Run dead, but I ain't running now because it really don't matter because he grown. And boom, goes the dynamite. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Anderson, you are the father. <laughs>
Can you even believe this bombshell? Jasmine Degree learns from her mom when she was just a sprout at age 9 that Mr. Little might actually be her bio dad. Big yikes considering she thought someone else was. This whole truth bomb came after Mr. Little had been denying paternity left and right despite admitting he and Jasmine's mom had a bit of a fling back in the day. The courtroom is buzzing and you can cut the tension with a knife. Just when you think it can't get wilder, buckle up because it does. The whole world changed when you were just 9 years and your mother revealed to you that your dad was not your biological father. He's denied you ever since. Mr. Little, you say you are 100% certain you are not her father. Talk about a wild phone call. At the ripe old age of 11, Jasmine decides to play detective and rings up Mr. Little to chat about dad stuff. Mr. Little is all DNA test or bust, despite barely knowing who Jasmine is. This early clash sets the stage for a bunch of drama and messy emotions all over the courtroom floor. Hold on to your popcorn because the next scene is a doozy. And I called him up on the phone, who my mother was and what I believe. He don't know. He needed. DNA test, he don't think so, and... Mr. Little, you told an 11-year-old you needed a DNA test? Yes, I did. Get a load of this guy in the middle of a heated throwdown. Mr. Little whips out a calendar from 24 whole years ago as his so-called proof trying to dodge the conception timeline like it's dodgeball. This moment really shows how far Mr. Little is willing to go to prove he's not the father, turning the courtroom into a reality show set. And just when you think this couldn't turn up a notch, it totally does. You got a calendar from 24 years ago? Hey, listen, wow. I don't even I do my a calendar work. from last, but you got a yourself, calendar I, from 24 hey, years dig, ago. I do my home. I'm a creative calendar to illustrate, but I don't know so if she who Beanie me, or what. How do you come up three months through. later pregnant? Let me walk. Plot twist incoming. Mr. Little spills the beans about getting blindsided with child support deductions from his paycheck, swearing up and down that it's a mistake. This twist throws a whole new layer of financial drama into the mix, proving that paternity puzzles can hit the wallet too. Stick around because the next part is just as juicy. If they start taking stuff out my check, I'm called. I want to take a DNS test because I want to get it stop. I call this number. They tell me they taking money out. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. It's not my child. She done told me twice it wasn't mine. Oh boy, here's where it gets even stickier. After the garnishment gets halted, Jasmine's mom gets grilled about whose name she dropped for the paternity rodeo when she signed up for welfare. Turns out, it's not just Mr. Little on the potential daddy list. This part dives deep into the sticky web of social and legal drama, showing just how tangled these tales can get. You're not going to want to miss what happens next. Things get real. Going to exist where you needed to. No, Your Honor, because that would have appeared. When you were asked to give a name, so was. did you give only his name or were no. there multiple? Can and little names. It should have been multiple names. Crank up the drama meter. Jasmine lays it all out, airing her frustration over how long it's taken to figure out if Mr. Little is her dad or not. She's like, dude, I found you in five minutes. What's your excuse? Frustration highlights not just the emotional toll, but also the slapstick of the situation as she steps up to call out the absurdity. The reveal coming up is absolutely not to be missed. It's a total showstopper. And I'm not saying he is my father. I'm not. And I was 11 years old. It took me five minutes to get in contact with him. So you telling me it took you 21 years? I mean, how was it that hard? So you must have not been searching. Our family members is married, so how can it be that hard to get? And here's the big reveal. Drum roll, please. Mr. Little, you are her father. <laughs> Mr. Moore strides into court today, all geared up to prove he's the real deal dad of four-year-old Ali Luna. He's totally convinced that the defendant, Ms. Scott, has been playing with his emotions by letting another dude play dad. He's here to squash those doubts and slide into his daughter's life like he's sliding into home base. Just you wait for what Ms. Scott has to say about this. You came to court today to prove you are the biological father of four-year-old Aliana and your current girlfriend claim the defendant has played on your emotion and has allowed another man to raise your little girl. You are desperate to put the defendant's doubt to rest so you can finally end your daughter's life. Judge Lake's on the case, poking at why Mr. Moore hasn't seen his supposed daughter. Turns out, Ms. E. Scott's been blocking him. Harder than a goalie at a soccer match? No calls, no texts, nada. The audience's jaws drop as Mr. Moore lays out his failed attempts to connect. Hold on to your popcorn, because there's a juicy bit coming up about why Ms. Scott's keeping him at bay. I've never seen a, my child a day in my life. But you're convinced she's your daughter. Yes, you Honor. So why hasn't he seen her? If he feels that way, why hasn't he tried to see her? I've tried to see her, Your Honor. She bought me sources of contact. She even changed her number. I tried to reach out to her on social media. I couldn't even get through on that. Never yes, about Honor. seeing her. Never. Only thing he ever said was, that's my child. The beans spill as Mr. Moore drops a bombshell that Ms. Scott was also seeing another guy around the time Ali Luna was conceived. The crowd goes wild. Judge Lake points out that while this might make you scratch your head, it doesn't mean you can just block a guy out. Stay tuned. The saga of their past relationship is about to 
to unfold. Because she had sex with another guy at the time. Well, that's reason to doubt. Yes. But not deny. That's what you're saying. Sure. It still remains that you are a possibility. So now, what was the nature of your relationship? We met on a dating site. He was kind of like an escape plan for something that I was... An I escape to... plan. Yeah. Escape plan. Mr. Moore and Ms. Scott swiped right into a whirlwind romance and shacked up almost instantly, but only for a hot minute. This fleeting fling is now at the heart of the paternity puzzle. Coming up, Ms. Scott's got a pregnancy announcement that'll throw everyone for a loop. Your Honor, okay. we had sex the first night I met her. <laughs> we so did not. It was not the first night. It was early, but it wasn't the first night. Did you use protection? No, it wasn't protected. So you moved in for a month. Were you faithful during that month? Like, I was currently in a relationship when I met him originally. Allie Luna's birth certificate is missing Mr. Moore's name, but she's rocking the last name of Mizzy Scott's current guy. This nugget of info hits the court like a slapstick punchline. They squint at the birth certificate details, noting Mr. Moore's absence. But don't go anywhere. The social media drama is about to ramp up. Is he on Aliana's you birth certificate? Your boyfriend? He is mentioned on all of her hospital paperwork and she has his last name. Under child's name, it reads Aliana Janelle. And then for father's name, there's no name listed. But they allow me to give my daughter her dad's name, even though his name is on there because he physically wasn't there. Enter Ms. Williams, Mr. Moore's main squeeze, who stirs the pot with tales of social media shade that hint Ms. Scott might think Mr. Moore could actually be the father. Social media is turning this courtroom drama into a soap opera. Buckle up, as the DNA results are just around the corner, and you won't believe this twist. How I heard of Adriana, and this is why I say he's the father, because when me and Mr. Moore first got together, I had posted Duntavies on social media. Miss Scott here, she commented on there, was like, I hope you got money for a baby wife. Never. Why would I do that? He not her daddy. On top of that, right after I had, when I had our son together in 2016, Mr. Moore had posted my son on social media. The big moments here, and Judge Lake's about to drop the DNA truth bomb. The court's buzzing. Everyone's on edge. This is the make or break moment. Keep your eyes peeled. The truth's about to blow the roof off this place. If a test, which it, it shouldn't, there's no way a test should say that he is the dad. But if it does, then, hey, we will we will make efforts, have some type of relationship built with them too. Because it's not, it's not for me. It's right. for It has been determined by this court. More. You are the father. <laughs> Can you believe this? Right out of a soap opera, Ms. Fuller drops a huge bombshell that the man on her birth certificate isn't her real dad. Instead, her mother whispered with her last breaths that her true pops was a famous singer, the main squeeze of her life. Talk about starting off with a plot twist. Just wait until you hear what's coming up. Ms. Fuller, you say that on your mother's deathbed, she confessed your dad was not the man lit birth certificate. You claim she then told you that your biological father was actually a well-known singer who was also the love of her life. All right, hold on to your popcorn, folks. After a wild goose chase, Ms. Fuller finally tracked down this mystery crooner who's literally chilling outside the courtroom as we speak. The audience can't even. They're all gasps and drop jaws. And Judge Lake, she's all in. Buckle up, because their face-to-face -face is going to be epic. Hey, you say you finally tracked him down and he's waiting outside of the court. Now, while you have doubts whether he is actually your biological father, you confess he's your last hope. Grab the tissues. Here's where it gets extra. Ms. Fuller unpacks years of daddy issues, telling us about the day her stand-in dad bounced and spilled the beans that he wasn't her biological father. This news hit her like a truck full of bricks, and honestly, it's been a roller coaster ever since. And just when you think you've caught your breath, there's more to this family drama. And I took and carried that with me for a long time. I'm 47 years old. I just like some answers. I'm just, I've got a lot of mixed emotions. I, I've never needed a father. I've always tried to carry on my life without having, knowing where I come from. You know, I've been pretty displaced right now. I'm, I'm just, I'm really just looking for some answers, and I need closure. Hold the phone, folks. Just before she kicked the bucket, Ms. Fuller's mom threw out a name. Cornelius. Yup, that supposedly dear old dad. By the way, was a sax-toting heartbreaker. So, Ms. Fuller hit the web, detective hat and all, to track this dude down. Next up, she finds something in her mom's old records that'll knock your socks off. So my mom on her deathbed, she died about a year ago, less than a year. She told me that, uh, that really my father is possibly Cornelius, didn't know who that was and she, who, who he is, possibly. So she just gave you a name? Gave me a name, and she said that basically that he was a saxophone player, he was a musician, and I thought, wow, okay. I found a record in her stuff. I Once I heard it, I just was... You're not ready for this. Ms. Fuller whips out a vinyl record in court, like it's show and tell, and guess what? It's got a track her supposed dad wrote all about her mom, Lorraine. If that ain't a clue, I don't know what is. The lyrics? Mushy as heck. Stick around because their first meeting is about to turn the tearjerker up to 11. And this is is song your alleged father wrote about your mother? Mm -hmm. 
So that was the song, Lorraine. That's yes. your mother's name. Yeah. Here it comes. Ms. Fuller and Mr. Alleged Dad Neil finally meet, and it's as awkward as a high school dance. There's hugging, there's crying, and the audience is eating it up. They've got a lifetime of catch-up to do in, like, five minutes. You won't want to miss how Mr. Neil handles the spotlight. Can I look you? <laughs> Mr. Neal, thank you so much for being here today. We are here because, of course, Ms. Fuller found you, Facebook, she says, and reached out to you. She believes there's a possibility you may be her biological father. Do you remember her mother, Lorraine? Yes, I was singing in a band at the time. Oh boy, here's the tea. After Lorraine got hitched to another dude and skipped town, Neil couldn't shake her off. So, what did our Romeo do? He tracked her down for one last fling. Yep, it's as scandalous as it sounds. But wait till you hear what happens when the DNA results come in. Well, yes, I, I knew she had married somebody else because I knew the guy. He was from the same hometown. She got married and left the town. I didn't know where she had. I found out that she was in San Bernardino. So me and my brother drove to San Bernardino to the place I thought she was at. And I knocked on the door and she came to the door. She did. Get ready for the big reveal. As to whether Mr. Neal is her biological father. Mr. Neal, you are not Miss Fuller's father. I'm sorry, Miss Fuller. Buckle up, folks! Ms. Cotton is spilling the tea that Mr. Pendleton denies being the father of their five-month-old daughter, Love, because his mom is whispering doubts in his ear. She's dead sure he's the dad and is here to clear the air today. Get ready! The next part is a doozy. Miss Cotton, you say Miss Pendleton's meddling mother is the reason he is denying your five-month-old daughter, Love Cotton. You claim you are 100% positive the father and plan to set the record straight today. Oh boy, here we go! Mr. Pendleton and his mom have entered the chat, both firmly in the camp that he couldn't possibly be Love's dad due to some fertility doubts. Mom's not just in his life, he's in his business too. Mr. Pendleton, you are here today with your mother and you both believe that it's impossible that you fathered Miss Cotton's daughter because you claim you are unable to have children. And it gets juicier. Ms. Cotton is firing back saying Love is practically Mr. Pendleton's twin, minus her own features. She's fuming over him not stepping up, blaming it all on his overbearing mom. Hang tight because it's about to get even spicier. I just want to say his mother needs to mind her business. Like, at the end of the day, Darren is a grown man. And I understand he's a mama's boy, or but he's a grown man now, and he needs to stand up and take care of his responsibility. Like, my daughter looks exactly like him, and I really not figure out how he denies her. Your Honor, she don't look nothing like her. None of my features, my, you know, my nose, my mouth, my eyes, nothing. And on spite of that, I've been in a relationship for eight years prior to this. You'll want to hear this. Amidst all the drama, Ms. Cotton doubles down, blaming the paternity denial on Mr. Pendleton's mom playing puppet master. The audience is eating it up. Watch closely, because things are about to get more tangled. You you say he's denying your baby. Uh, yes. And you say it's his mother. She's meddling. Well, she said she was a, with another man at the same time. What was the nature of this relationship? it or what I were mean, you? I mean, we were together for a while and then we separated, but we were still having having sex. So, so how many years? How long? About ten months separated, and then we were still, you know, dealing with each other. Just when you thought it couldn't get any wilder, boom! Ms. Cotton drops a bombshell. There was another man in the mix around baby making time. Trust and responsibility are flying out the window now. But wait, there's more drama brewing. I slept with one person in April. Okay, so you slept with somebody. Right, but how many times though? Like, I mean, it was once. One but, time in April. But how can I believe we when so I'm at saying the day, I'm a grown woman, I can do whatever I want. So how are you 100% sure? You slept with somebody in April. The court records say that your child born in December, right? Eight, landed April at nine months. Oh, snap. Turns out the plot isn't just thick, it's complicated. Miss Cotton admits the other guy might have ditched protection mid-encounter, shaking up her 100% certainty claim. Keep your eyes peeled. The next revelation is a real kicker. From when you slept with the other guy? Yes. But you did have sex someone else, and was it protected or unprotected? It was protected until he took the condom off. And that like, would be unprotected. Uh, but she's 100% sure. The question of the day besides the paternity. Because allegedly she looked, but she a baby. She ain't got her features yet. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. How do have her features Don't get me yet, wrong. Like... She beautiful like she, but I can't, you know, she a baby. Get ready for a curveball. The judge is now dissecting the pregnancy timeline after that potential second dad bombshell, trying to pin down the conception mystery. The truth is stranger than fiction here, folks. The verdict's coming up and you won't believe it. Does the doctor ever verify that the timeline that you believe to be true is? That's the testimony I was trying to get. So now you told Mr. Pendleton that he is the biological father based upon the due date. Did you tell this other guy that he was a possibility? He's relevant. No, but you did you tell him he was a possibility? I found out all the stuff that was going on. I'm honest with him as well. Like That's my point. Here's where it gets real. The spotlight shifts to Mr. Pendleton's role, or lack thereof, in Love's life. Ms. Cotton's not holding back on her 
disappointment with his daddy duties. The final showdown is upon us. It's gonna be epic. What has Mr. Pendleton done for her? Honestly, spent a little bit of time, like out her on a couple weekends. Yeah, and I, I don't really like, I've kept I don't really like him I getting my daughter, I took but he down has Philly. got her time. You know, see, I take her out and have fun with her. Are you supporting her financially? No. I do what I can no. for her when I can. All yes, right, no. whatever. It's no. The big reveal is finally here. Drum roll, please. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Pendleton, you are the father.